I we lost sound. We lost you, Allie. Oh, Thank you. Audio. Thank you. This is why it's always best to work with teams because we have that voice telling us when we need to uh, uh, make an adjustment. Good afternoon, parents. Now you can hear me. Thank you. Uh, we are recording this session, and after once the 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 material becomes available, we post it for you on our webpage. So welcome everyone. My name is Alejandra La Torre, Family Engagement Program Manager. We're glad you're here. I'm going to then now start sharing my screen for you to be able to see um, the presentation that will guide our uh, the content of our meeting. So. Let me see. Oh, okay. to my drive and the presentation is there for you. Uh, just bear with the speed of my internet. Here we go. Okay, so in a moment, it will be fully displayed on the screen. Here we go. Ready, welcome you. I already uh, did the introductions and I would like to you to uh, look at our agenda. This is what we want to accomplish today. Uh, we're gonna show you a little bit about ClassLink uh, and uh, Google Classroom and Seesaw Class. Also, Wonders and um, Go Math. And also a little bit about engagement expectations for both students and parents. Said on the screen, you see the main goals for today's engagement. We want you parents to learn further how your child is connecting with their teachers. And we want you parents to be, be very comfortable and feel familiar uh, with this process so that you can be our ally in supporting the level of engagement that your student has with their teachers, which is then supporting uh, continuity in learning. Uh, we also want you parents to have uh, awareness as to how you receive communications, and we wanna make sure that you do receive that communication, as well as the ability on your part to communicate, to reach out to us when you notice that it's necessary. Uh, for you to intervene and advocate for your child and, and we make the necessary adjustments. We want to make sure that we support learning continuity and the student's level of engagement. I would like to then now uh, give uh, the microphone to Ms. Northcott. She is, uh, like I said, an ed tech coach with elementary and curriculum and instruction department. And she's going to show us about ClassLink. Um, Ms. Northcott. Thank you. So here at Colton, um, we use a dashboard called ClassLink, and that is the area where all of students in Colton will be able to go to this dashboard and be able to access the different programs and be signed in through their Google account. It keeps it a really nice organized way for them to go to this place and not have to memorize different websites and bookmarks and login information. So we'll give you an example of what that looks like uh, now. Go ahead, Allie. We're gonna be also going over the wonders and um, go math like um, we said earlier. So when your student, if your student is using a Chromebook, a district device Chromebook, when they log into their Chromebook, automatically their Chromebook, Chromebook will launch an open class link. If your student is using a personal device at home, not a Chromebook, then they have a couple different options of how to get to Chromebook. And we'll show that to you on the next slide. On the next slide, we show you how from our Colton Joint Unified main website, or also from your student's school website, they're able to click on the Let's Go button, navigate down to Class Link, and the next step is for them to log into their Google account. They'll need that information if they're on their own device with their email and their password. So now we're gonna go take a look at the next two programs that we use here for our elementary. 
So the next slide will show you Go Math, and that is for our K-5 grades, and 6th through 12th grade uses MyHRW. Both of these icons will be in your child's class link dashboard. On this next slide, I have an example of what a dashboard looks like for a student if you haven't seen it yet. The dashboard has different icons on it, and yours may look different than this one. You may have different apps than this picture shows. That all depends on the grade level of your child, the organization that they might have put into place, and also the school site that they're attending. You'll notice here, there is the Go Math icon. So the student would click on Go Math to get them logged in with their Google account. The next slide will show you that on the Think Central platform, students will find assignments under their things to do tab. They will click there and that is where they will see any assignments that their teacher has assigned to them to complete with a due date. Under my library, they will have access to different resources for their grade level that they can do such as games, vocabulary, different videos to help with math learning. And my scores will show them their scores for the assignments that they have um, completed. So this is an example of what it looks like once you've clicked on things to do. Again, just a list. And from that list, they will click on the name of the assignment to then take them inside that activity. There will be a process to then push complete or finish or submit once they're done. On this slide, this is an example of what you might see in a My Library. Again, these are just resources that you can partake in. So you as a parent, you do not have to just stick with what has been assigned to your child. If you feel that there is time where you wanna look at additional resources that they can do, something that you can look at together, you can also go and view the resources that will support that child in that grade level of learning in math. On the next slide, we show now uh, MyHRW for grade six through 12. They have an icon instead of go math, they have their icon. Again, they click on that icon starting in class link and that takes them to log in, attach their Google account and write into the program. Once they enter the program, they will see some icons at the top. So it looks a little different than what we had for the elementary level. My notebook, on the next slide, we'll show their different assignments that have been assigned to them. So we can go ahead and give you an idea of what that looks like. And this will contain all of their student work. The next one shows the interactive student edition. The interactive student edition is a way that the student can interact with the learning. This may contain live lesson uh, videos, um, not live, but video lessons that they can watch and partake in, and also some built-in practice along the way. It should also adjust based on how they're answering questions to help guide them to where they need to be. On the next, uh, slide, the next icon you can click on is student online edition. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It is the online electronic edition of their textbook. So if they click on that, it will open it up to their textbook and it is searchable and organized just like their textbook is. They will have access to all the lessons and materials from within that icon. You can search by table of contents or find the page number. There's even a way to write notes if they needed to, but it's very helpful if, if they forgot their book somewhere or if they didn't get a book right away and they're waiting, you can access the book this way. And the last one here, the student edition and resource, it contains links to lesson level resources and textbook contents. And you'll see on this next page, it is just a list of things that you have access to again in a different view and their live links. So you would be able to click on it and it would take you into that area.
The next area we're going to talk about is our ELA, our language arts curriculum. So we have adopted the wonders curriculum for grades K through six. And for dual immersion, um, they also have the Maravillas. The icon you would see in class link is McGraw Hill. So that is the link they're looking for when they need to get into their ELA curriculum. To launch this curriculum, they first click on that icon in their class link dashboard. Then a new tab will open and they will need to just click launch, the launch button to open the material that has been assigned to them by their teacher. Once they do that, the student will now see their portal screen and it has several components to be aware of that they may interact with. The first one we'll go over is the one that says read. So this is where they can find their reading material, their stories that they're reading with the class, just like their textbook, um, different level readers and such. So here is an example of what is available for that student to click on and read. And this may differentiate, this may differ for each grade level. You might see different resources available. The next icon is that word box. This one is specifically for vocabulary. And when you click on that, it will take you to a, a vocabulary list for the week because this is is attached to the teacher's lesson plan for the week. And this is a list that is interactive. When the student may click on a word, they will get such support as the word read aloud, pictures or videos about the words, the definition of the word, and even an example of the word being used. And the next icon there is uh, adaptive learning activities. This takes them to online learning activities that they can pick a strand or a skill, even a topic um, to help build up their skills that they need. So on the next slide, you'll see how you'll be able to choose areas that you might see that your child needs some support in and be able to choose an area to work on and help strengthen that student's abilities. It should adapt to whatever their level is showing. So based on their answers, it will step them up and maybe increase in rigor or slow down and help fill in some of the gaps. The next icon, this is one for learning games. So your child will be able to do some learning games that are connected to the reading in their Wonders platform. Such games contained here will deal with things like vocabulary practice, maybe some spelling, grammar, phonetics, so phonemic awareness, even how words are pronounced in syllabication. And one more icon here is the writing resource that is available. On this one, you'll see an uh, example slide that shows mini lessons, rubrics that might be attached, and even some graphic organizers and example writings for this section. All right, the next area is student resources. So this is just a another way to get to the students um, different resources that they have available on this program. You'll see on the next screen how it lays it out in a way that you can use the filtering on the left to help you find level readers that are available, maybe some of the games right there. What are some graphic organizers to help your child with maybe a writing that they're asked to participate in? And the last area here is my binder. So in my binder, this is where it will contain all the assignments that a teacher has provided, as well as any past work that the student has completed that you're able to take a look at. So here's your list that you would able to say, okay, your teacher has assigned some work on wonders. Let's go in and take a look and go right to their my binder for their list of things to do. In the next slide, it shows a school to home tab. And what this does is it pretty much grabs what the teacher is going to be focusing on for that story or that time period 
and it attaches to what the teacher has designated in their lesson plan. So it might tell you what the comprehension is or the vocabulary for that week, what the focus is, maybe even some writing. This is one way to see what they're working on. Um, but another way is also depend on whatever platform your teacher is using to communicate to you as a parent, whether that's Class Dojo, Seesaw, Class, uh, Google Classroom, whatever that platform is, hopefully that information also will tell you the focus for the week. Um, and do you know what I just noticed, Alejandro, is we didn't, um, I didn't click on that video, I think, for Google oh. Classroom and Seesaw. Uh, so maybe we yes, can go back to that. Yes. I, I yes, just, let's go back. Oh, so let's just I, go well, back to that. Took, Yeah, it felt too quick. I thought, hmm. I did too. Oh. So we'll go back. What we're about to show you is a recording that one of our colleagues that um, is also curriculum and instruction, um, she uh, put together a screencast that shows how to use the Google Classroom program, the app, and how to use Seesaw. So Google Classroom is something that's available for our students, um, TK all the way through um, high school. Uh, so Google Classroom is, is a wonderful tool. However, we've also um, pulled and purchased the ability for teachers to use a program called Seesaw. So it's in that, it's in that presentation, Alejandra. Um, it should be on that page. to the email. Uh, okay. nope. It's opening it now. Let's see. That sounds fine. <laughs> I'll continue to talk. So Seesaw yeah. is another program where um, we we have it purchased for TK through or even preschool. Sorry, preschool through second grade. A teacher may choose to use Seesaw instead. And Seesaw is a platform that is even more interactive, really helps support the the relying not just on written text directions from a teacher and written responses from a student, but adds in those layered elements of giving auditory answers and auditory directions. Um, and interactive, like I said, the students are able to capture their answers with video responses, and the video just gives you an idea of how that operates. So if one of your child uses Google Classroom or Seesaw, you're gonna get an idea right now of how those platforms work. And this link is also gonna be in the presentation. So don't worry if you miss something, um, you will have access to this link to rewatch it if needed. I don't hear it. Um, uh -huh. no. No. Um, can one of the panelists give us feedback if you can hear it? I, I can hear it. I cannot hear it. You cannot. What could it be? Uh, the device that you're speaking through, is it the same one that um, you are presenting from? Yes. And when you click to share content, did you have the option? Did you? Oh, I hear it. Is it good? Day through. Okay. Students can use yes. their Google Classroom and Seesaw applications to engage with their class and their teacher by launching them through ClassLink and then showing you the features of both of those applications. I'm going to start with Google Classroom. As you can see, I'm in my ClassLink desktop right now. And um, you can see that my desktop might be organized slightly differently from your students. I might have more apps than they do. I also might have organized them differently. So please just uh, be aware that you should be looking for the icon itself and not necessarily where it's located on the dashboard or desktop. So I'm going to start with classroom and I'm going to show you what the icon looks like and how Google Classroom can work for your students. So when you want to launch Google Classroom for your student, or if you need your student to launch it, what they're looking for is this icon. It looks almost like a chalkboard with some pictures, um, silhouettes of people on it, and it's Google Classroom. So when you click there, what it will do is it will automatically open your child's Google Classroom. 
um, they will see a list of classes here. So they may have more than one, depending on if um, their teacher from last year removed uh, the Google Class or archived the class that they were in. So please don't panic if you see more than one class here. Just make sure that your child accesses this current year's class. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you, we're going to click here, and when you see the class, it actually puts up a reminder right here um, if something is becoming close to its due date. All right, so I'm in the classroom. When we enter the classroom, the first thing that we see is the stream, and the stream is all of the posts um, from both the teacher and the students in the classroom. It almost looks like a Twitter feed, if you are familiar with Twitter where people can post um, documents, photos, ideas, um, communications in live time. Um, so if I were to share something with my class here, if I were going to say, hi, everyone, um, does anyone know where to find tomorrow's reading assignment? When I post this, it will immediately go out to everyone in the class. Um, and so that's how that works. Here on the left, you will see that there is an upcoming notification that I have an assignment due tomorrow. So that might be something that I need to work on today so that I can have it ready to go. The next thing that you have here across the top in these tabs is the class work tab. In the classwork tab, you will find a list of all of the work that is due for your class that the teacher has assigned. And you can see I have several things here available to me. They are listed in chronological order here, starting with the oldest on top and the newest is on the bottom. My teacher has given me also some practice things to do, so there's another category underneath here. If I want to see something that I've worked on, I can click view your work and I can see things that um, are due for me. And you can see here, I have several missing assignments. This is my demonstration classroom. So I am the teacher and the student in this classroom and I haven't done any of my own work. Um, so you can see that I have a list of assignments here that I can start working on. I have the assigned. Uh, category. So again, this is a list of everything that's been assigned, returned. If I'm if I'm uh, looking for a work that I have turned in and then the teacher has given comments on or grades on, it will be here. And missing, that's my list of things that didn't get turned in on time. All right. And so students can look at the list of work and they can go ahead and start working on things. Um, here you will also find a link to the calendar. And what's nice about Google Calendar, it is linked directly to, classroom, to the Google Classroom. So your student um, assignment will actually be showing on the date that they're due. Um, and students can even set reminders to remind them, hey, you need to work on this assignment. Um, and then the class drive folder is where all of the classes work lives. Um, in Google Drive. So I probably don't have anything here because I didn't do any of the work. However, you can see that I do have some things here that um, came from assignments that were previous that perhaps I didn't complete. Um, but if I had completed them, the work would also show here. Go back to the classwork and let's go ahead and take a look at one of these activities so I can show you what it looks like for students. So I'm going to go to the one that says it's due tomorrow. When I click on this, it opens this page here so that I can see what the assignment is. And here I can see that there are some directions. It says read the passage and answer the questions. And then there is an attached document. I can also click here for view assignment, and that will give me everything that I need to know about this assignment, including the ability to add a comment. So if I had a question about something, I could actually post it here under class comments, and my teacher would be able to see my question, as well as my classmates, so that they could help me um, do what I needed to do. 
I'm going to go ahead and click here so that you can see assignment. And this assignment is actually something from the curriculum that we're using, Wonder. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pretend like I'm completing this assignment. I'm just going to type into these text boxes quickly, just some, some letters so that you can see that this document um, that my teacher has given me is editable. Also, you'll notice in the title, let me zoom it back in for you. You can see in the title that my teacher has set it up so that it makes a copy for me automatically, and my name is right there in the title, so that when I turn it in, the teacher will know whose work um, he or she is looking at. I don't need to do anything to this, which is the nice thing about Google, is when you're working in a Google application, it has an autosave feature, which means that our students, especially our younger students, don't have to worry about pushing a button to save their work. The work is automatically saved for them. I'm done with my work now, so I'm actually going to go ahead and turn it in. You can see my work is here already because Google has taken care of that for me. And now I'm going to turn it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Seesaw looks like for students. You can see I'm back in my class link dashboard or desktop. And I'm going to go to the icon that is for Seesaw. The Seesaw icon looks like a rainbow colored bow tie. This is the Seesaw icon. So when I click here, it's going to automatically take uh, me to my Seesaw classroom. And you can see that I'm here again. I am my own student in the room. First things I want to talk to you a little bit about are what are the parts of Seesaw need to be looking for as a parent and how does it work. So the first thing is the journal. The journal shows all of the work that I have turned in. Um, the teacher must approve the work to be placed into the journal. So once the teacher has looked at the work and decided that it is good work or fine to share, then it will go into my journal. And you can see I have one assignment here. The next tab over is activities. And your students' assignments are going to be found in activities. Activities has several categories. It has to do all of the activities that need to be done. It has in progress for things that the student is going to edit and continue working on. And it has done, and the done category are all of the things that have been turned in. Let's take a look at how we can add work to Seesaw. So you can see here, I'm going to do this activity here, the digraph word source. I can see the directions. So let me read the directions first. It says, sort these words into the correct column, tap the add button, tap your name and add this to your journal, tap the label tool and sort the words, tap the mic and read the words, tap the check mark to save your work. So that's a lot of things. There's also audio directions here. I'm not going to push play on this because I'm connected to Bluetooth. I'm not certain that it's going to play and I don't want to have it be blank when I push the button. But just know that the teacher has read in these exact directions into some audio directions for your students so that they can listen to the directions. So I'm going to go ahead and add response here. If when I'm in this work page, if at any time, if I can't remember what it is that I need to do, this button at the top that says view instructions, if I click that, the instructions will come back down so that I can listen to them again and I can read them again. So this is actually a word sort that the teacher has developed and the teacher wants me to sort these words into categories their um, their onset or their beginning sound. So I have shh and and so I need to sort the words. So and she also asked me to record my voice. So if I need to record my voice, the way I do it is using this little microphone icon, and it's going to start recording me. Ship, thin. 
Dog. Shut. Cat. Thank. Chum. Thick. Shag. Thorn. Chin. I made a mistake. Thick beyond peer. Shed. When students are ready to stop recording, they click the pause button. I can see it's flashing up here that I'm paused. If I'm done recording, the green check mark that says done. I'm going to show you some of the, even though that wasn't part of the direction, just so that you can know where you can find them. First thing that you will see is toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen. You already saw the microphone. There's also a here so that students can place a text box. So you can see I have a text box here. I can type into it. I can also change the color of my text box using the sliding uh, rainbow color strip on the right-hand side of the screen. I'm also able to take a photograph and a video. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a picture of myself. And I am going to add it into my work. I can resize it. I can drag it around the screen. I'm just going to leave that, put it up here. All right, and then you can see the three dots here. This is where I can change the background. I can add links and shapes depending on what my teacher needs me to do. It can be fun to add shape to my work. Student is doing something um, with a plain white background, usually they're allowed to change the color. And then you see there's a toolbar here. I'm going to make that go away. And I can see the little quotation marks. I can add a voice caption to my work. So if I want to record while I'm working, I can do that. You saw me do that. I can also add a caption here. Here is my work on When I'm done recording, I click done. I can also type in a caption. Here is my work on. And then across the bottom, I have some additional tools. So I have the tool that's what allows me to um, click and drag things around the screen. I have a pencil. I can use my pencil to write. I have a pen, and again, the pen also allows me to write. If your student has a touchscreen um, Chromebook, this is wonderful, especially for our younger students who might have difficulty operating a keyboard. Um, Using their touch screen, they are able to write onto their screen with these tools, just as if they were writing on a piece of paper. I have a highlighter, so I can highlight things. I have another writing implement here where I can write. And it looks almost like spray paint there. And then if I decide that something just didn't go the way I wanted it to, I also have an eraser here so I can erase things that I don't want to have there anymore. So that's a basic look at the tools that are available. If I decide that I don't like any of this work or the last step that I did, I can also get the undo button. And you can see that starting to take things away and put things back in order of how I did them. Anytime a student is finished with their work, they're going to want to click the green check mark. That will turn it in completely. 
if your student is working on something and they want to save it and keep working on it later, they're going to want to click draft. So I'll click draft first so you can see what it says. It's uploading it now. And it's in the journal, but it's as a draft, which means that only myself and my teacher can view it. If I want to edit it, I can click the edit button to keep working on it. I'm going to show you that in the activities tab, that will also show here in the to-do list, I can finish my response, or I can go here to the in progress and finish my response. So there's three ways that students can go back to something that they have been working on that they have saved to finish up later. And that is, again, through the journal, your work will show and you can push the edit button. In the activities tab, in the to do, there's a finish response button there, or in the in progress. So I'm going to click response so I can show you how to turn it in when it is completely done. So when your student has finished their work and they're ready to send it to their teacher as a finished product, they always use the green check mark to signify that they're completely finished with something. Now that uh, work has gone to me as the classroom teacher, right, and as the teacher, I will now be able to grade it. And that's what it looks like for your student in you saw there's one more area that I to show you, and that is the inbox. The inbox is where the teacher can send announcements to the class. So you'll get notifications and messages there. I have placed some things here. So these are messages that the teacher has sent out and broadcast to the entire class. Many teachers might use this to um, share their schedule for the week. Um, a video that they want their students to watch might be found here as well. So you want to keep an eye on the messages. All right. So that is an update for you on how uh, Seesaw works as well. Thank you so much for your time. Very well. Hmm. Hi. I'm Lisa Curtis from Educational Services Division, grades TK through six, and I'm going. Apologies, parents. Here we go. Oh boy, it's not letting me escape. Okay, now it is. So we go back where we were in terms of uh, the presentation. Just to recap, uh, Ms. Northcock uh, shared with us about uh, math, about our adopted curriculum materials, and uh, and also the platform that is the the tool, the, the dashboard for all of our students, which is Classly. And the different sections within that uh, electronic or digital platform that our students can access. Something that we mentioned at, at our meeting in the morning in Spanish, Ms. Northcott, was that parents don't need to wait for teachers to assign work uh, in this platform for families to benefit from these tools, correct? Can you speak a little bit about that, please? Correct, yes. We went ahead and showed you on the Go Math platform and HRW and wonders how there's always a, a mind library or student resource. And those are areas where you can go and have access to different things like videos, practicing games, um, leveled readers, writing prompts, uh, a, an assortment of different resources for a parent to maybe be able to take a look and see what they're what they're focusing on for that week with math or what's going to be happening in that grade level that they should be maybe aware of. So and I, question think, uh -huh. I was just going to say, and I think um, beyond just the assignments that are happening in their, in their child's uh, classroom, a nice checkout that I do with my own kids is at the end of the day, I have them walk me through what they did that day, even though I'm able to be in the vicinity and kind of check in, it's a way for them now to process their learning and put it in words 
and show me because they as the student interact with these platforms more than I do as a parent. So I'm able to see, well, what did you work on in language arts? What does that mean? Can you show it to me? Tell me that in your own words. So those conversations I think are so impactful because it's it's making the learning go to the next level and having to say it again to make it more permanent when they're having to retell and teach you as a parent what they learned that day. Yes, and and yeah. for families who are not as comfortable with technology, uh, we would like to reassure you: click, explore, get in the different segments uh, where with the different tools, uh, because it it not only uh, shows your child that you're willing to go where you have not been with them, but also the value of being curious and exploring and not being afraid. Um, if you click on a button and you need to get out, nothing happens. It's just you were there and you needed to go to a different place. So that's what you do. I, I think this is a valuable moment when we think of experience and lessons, life lessons. Um, because when you parents are venturing out of your comfort zone and, and, and getting to these places with your child, it, it shows your child that you are adaptable and that you're flexible and that you're willing to learn and relearn and unlearn as necessary to function in this moment when we have to do things in such different ways. We have talked about the roles that we have uh, adopted uh, professionally for us as educators. We have had to make adjustments and we work with so many more people now due to our very strong intention to make sure that we are of service to you that we empower you and your child. So it is a, a similar behavior at home when you can say, okay, let's, let, let's get here and show me what you did. I think that's a very great, a, a great idea, Ms. Northcott. And with that, we would like to uh, go, uh, continue with the presentation. We're almost done. Uh, we wanted to bring to you uh, the very important um, topic of making sure that your students remain engaged. Uh, and these are the expectations that we have in terms of attendance. Uh, for us, we expect that students attend all the live lessons daily that their teachers offer to them. And also very important that they complete and turn in assignments. Uh, you saw on the different platforms that teachers have a due date. So be watchful of those due dates uh, to make sure that the student is submitting their work on time. That not only uh, makes sure that the student knows that the student is interested, the teacher, but also it, it's a life lesson for children to, uh, to know that when they become professionals, adults, that they have their lines to meet and it's already in their level of discipline that they will do this. Uh, also, we expect that students show their participation for every day, every school day, by completing their work, their assignments, the assessments that were assigned by their teacher for that day, and that they do it within that day or within the short period of time that is within the deadlines that the teachers are giving you. Um, and then there's also another aspect this uh, came uh, to me from student services. Unless the student attends, the student is marked absent. And if the student is absent but has their assignments included in their completed work assignments, they will receive a DL mark on their attendance record. Nevertheless, um, I think nothing can replace the value of the child being an active participant in the live lessons that their teachers are offering. Because not only are they engaged and interacting interacting and, and being exposed to added vocabulary and to the lesson that the teacher prepared for them, but also be, because there's opportunity for interaction with their peers. And that is something that as human beings is so necessary for us. We are social beings, and this is yet another way that your child can interact with their peers. Thinking of parents. Uh, these are our expectations, and I know we know that expectations for parents have uh, evolved and, and have increased dramatically uh, due to the 
uh, the moment of students learning from home. But we want you, we want to ask you to continue to support the continuity of learning of your child by providing them with time and space to learn. Also, reach out to teachers if you need help with technology, with social emotional uh, um, situations with the student or with you, and also if there's a need with academic growth. So your teacher is your first line of of uh, of communication, but also keep in mind for elementary is the teacher followed by the vice principal, the principal following the chain of command. For secondary, it is a little bit different. We want to uh, just make a uh, notice that it's quite different. Uh, students in secondary have several teachers, so we have to figure out which teacher do I need to reach out to and also and then move on to if if the if it's not addressed if your concern is not addressed then you go on to the counselor the vice principal the principal uh, and we're also uh, making sure that through our parent portal it is a tool just like our children have class link you have the parent portal the parent portal uh, came to be a pair of requests from parents. They they kept asking us, I want to have a place where I can go and see as a parent all the information about my child. And they have if I have more children to see all my children in one place. Because what we did prior to parent portal is parents had to get their logon information of their child and then get in as as their student. This is much easier and it's uh, I think it's more uh, empowering because parents don't have to go back and forth from this student, that student, what's their password. So this is a means for you to help us by monitoring your student. Look at their performance, look at their level of engagement. Uh, are they, is their attendance record accurate? Uh, and we are going to talk about attendance record in our meetings on next week. So uh, please bear with us. Uh, also, uh, participate at site level meetings, uh, go to your ELAC, go to your school site council, go to your back to school night, go to your coffee with the principal. If your teacher calls you to a meeting for that, for that class alone, please go. Uh, I know we are being repetitious, but um, I think it's important that we make sure we're making every effort on our part to reach out to you. And, and to help you feel comfortable with us and help you know that we are here and we have the best interest of your child at heart. And that's what we, why we do what we do. Uh, at district level, you can participate. There's several opportunities also. We have our African-American Parent Advisory Committee. We have our community cabinet. We have our DLAC committee, DPAC, DIPN, LCP Parent Committee. And on the screen, you see there's an upcoming meeting on, on the 8th. That's for our African-American um, families, but everyone is, is welcomed. Every parent is welcome to, to join. Uh, also, we have our DPAC. This is our most diverse parent committee. And we offer, as you can see, quite a few meetings. We want to make sure that every month we, we, uh, we contact you and we have this uh, opportunity to, to communicate. Uh, our, our meetings in the morning are from 11 to noon and they're in Spanish and we record them. And then we have the evening meetings um, uh, in English from five to six. Every meeting that we have, we are recording. We wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to go back and look at the, the material, refer to it. Also, what I'm doing is that I, I am sending to you via QC when I when you receive my phone calls, my texts, my emails. I, I also send out to you the presentation for you to refer back to it. Uh, we also have a uh, parent network for our dual immersion uh, families. Their needs are very different because their children are following a model that um, results in their students be, being biliterate in English and Spanish, and that's why they need their own space. You see the date on the screen. Uh, this coming week also, we have on Wednesday, our DLAC meeting. Uh, that is the 
the oldest committee, the oldest established committee in the school district. And it is, uh, it has a strong emphasis in um, being receptive to the needs of, of families whose children are considered English learners. Their needs are different. And so uh, I want to be sure that you are uh, convinced and that you feel the level of care and the dedication that we have for your child. Please know you can reach out as, like I said, contact your teacher, uh, make every effort to have this very fluid communication and collaboration at site level. But at district level, we are also here for you. Every uh, parent meeting is designed with you in mind. We want to empower you continuously. We want to make sure that you, uh, that you are a very active participant and our best ally in making sure that our students continue to learn and that they continue to be curious and hungry for knowledge. Uh, if you, if I may be of assistance, you have my email on the screen and you also have my phone number. Talking about phone numbers, I can tell you that when you contact the school sites, when you contact any of us to our office number, uh, our IT department has uh, made the adjustment so that you call our office number, number, but we receive that phone call at home. So don't hesitate. And if we don't pick up, know that we probably are on another call or we are at a meeting, but we're here to help you. So please leave us a message or send us an email. And we are here to support you. We want to acknowledge that you are receiving a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, a lot of texts from us, and it can um, be a disruption in your day. It can also be that you get that uh, message in a moment where it's not the best moment. Uh, let it go to voicemail and listen to it again, uh, later when it's more a better moment, but know that every message that goes out to you has the pure intention of making sure that we are on the same page. This is a moment when uh, it's more important than ever to remain flexible, to adapt to the moment, and to be uh, courageous to venture out of our comfort zones. Uh, now we have to work with technology that much more, and it's not only for us, but it's also for you. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and come back to reality, I will tell you that when, when one shares their screen, you become blind in a way you don't see anything else that's happening. And, um, and then we come back and we're able to see the participants and the chat. Um, I would like to ask Ms. Guerra, Ms. Clark, Ms. Northcott, are we addressing the questions? Do we have any more questions? I know we're approaching the moment of uh, adjourning the meeting, but uh, just reiterate to, to parents that were here for you. Hi, Ellie. Hi. Just to know that there were a few questions about what does DL stand for? And that stands for distance learning. So if there is anyone else, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Not that I can see, Ale. Okay, so I know there's there's a request to post the meeting dates on the homepage of of, uh, of school sites. I I can send out the, the the request to our principals. Please know that our our school sites uh, web page uh, is designed to mirror the one at district level, so that it's a very consistent environment. But by all means, and I will be sending out the invitation to, to the lab. I also sent out the invitations to APAC. Uh, we are making sure that you receive our information and that you are able to, to refer back to it when necessary. Uh, uh, let me show you uh, really quick where you our meetings. Um, if you go to our web page. On the main page, this is where you get to class. This beautiful button right here is your best friend. And also, this is where you go to the Q portals. 
So when you click on this, you get to uh, this where when it's a student, they can uh, log in through here. But if you're a, pa a parent, you get to your parent portal through here. And so you are provided by IT, a parent ID number is numeric. And then initially, the first time that you get your parent ID, uh, you get a temporary password. It's, it's one of those difficult passwords, but you, you have it in an email, you can refer to it. You put it in and you log in. As you log in, you can see all your students' information there. And it's important that you reset your password. When, um, when we give you the temporary one, we want you to create one that is friendly for you to remember. If you forget your password, you can, you can also indicate to us that you have forgotten your password. So I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that we are able to to get you on the parent portal it it can be a very good friend to you so but i was going to show you where you can refer to our meetings and it is this place so come here you can see the meetings that have taken place um, i know our information and technology department is understandably um extremely busy and so the meetings that have taken place recently are not uploaded yet, but uh, know that the request is made and they will do it as soon as possible. That's how they work. They're wonderful, beautiful. And this is where you can come back and look at our meetings. We, uh, every meeting that we offer, because uh, we cannot function um, simultaneously in two languages, it, it's not conducive to good communication. What we have been doing is that we have different sessions, one in Spanish and one in English. And uh, we wanna make sure that language is not a barrier. So when you click here, you can uh, watch the entire meeting either in Spanish or in English. And then there's also additional content here from questions that parents have asked, but just wanting to make sure that you know this is available to you. And I will stop sharing my screen again. Okay. Okay, so I believe we are good ladies. Do we have any more questions? I do not see anything else out. Yeah. Thank you, Nairi. Nada, thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, Nairi. I know Nairi has been uh, helping us with the chat and supporting parents in in being able to hear the meeting. Uh, I just want to uh, encourage parents to let other parents know that the content of our meetings is designed for you and, and invite them to either watch the recording or to join us. And, and also we hope that you know that the level, the amount of calls that we are sending out to you, it goes always with the best of intentions. We, we don't want to annoy you we want to inform you and we want to empower you. Um, uh, with that, I want to uh, then close the meeting, wishing you a wonderful weekend. It's a long weekend. Uh, support your children in, in remaining um, ch a child in, in, in having the moment of relaxation that children should have enjoy. So uh, with that, thank you very much again for joining us. We will see you soon. I was I will be sending out the notices for the next meetings. Uh, but as a as a reminder, next week we have APAC on Tuesday and D DLAC on Wednesday. And then the following week we have DPAC and then we have DIP and all these acronyms that we handle in, in education. It's it's quite funny, but it's the way that works for us. So thank you very much. We wish you a wonderful weekend. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. We're here to help you. Thank you. Hallie, there's yes. a, a parent that just left a personal comment and just wanted you to know um, that they said thank you. Oh, um, the, the um, meeting today. Oh, thank you. And you know what? I, I, I know I am responsible for the meetings, but it, there's a team behind it. There's a team of dedicated and talented individuals behind all of this. So with, 
with that, I want to say thank you. I will extend that gratitude to everyone who has helped us with this meeting and other meetings. Uh, Terry, Nairi, uh, Ms. Curtis, who couldn't be here, but um, a synchronous uh, participation was present. So uh, uh, thank you very much for that. Have and a I great weekend. You too. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.